Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living your life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to do what it takes to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Welcome, my friends, to The Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I hope your day is off to a fantastic start. I know it's an absolutely beautiful day here in sunny California, and I am just extremely happy to be with all of you today. I hope that all of you are having tremendous success in your practices and that you are beginning to live life far more fully engaged. Enjoying every single moment of this grand adventure. If you haven't made your way to the new website, please do so. Go check it out. It turned out pretty cool. It's at www.expansionmastery.com. Go check that out. You can get some uh, products there. And as I covered in the last episode, I have a really, really outstanding program. I think my best yet that I'm working on right now, and it's going to be an entire series on mastering the breath. You do not want to miss this. This is going to be so beneficial. It's going to help you whether you're doing spiritual practices, meditation, martial arts. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, You don't have to be doing any of those things. If you just want better health, some stress relief, you are going to want to get this series. Trust me. So for today's episode, I'd like to cover a little bit more about the breath and share some of the things with you because the breath is the foundation of all of our practices. It is at the core of all spiritual practices, meditation. It's at the very core of living, right? Without the breath, we don't uh, last too long, do we? So we look at deep breathing and, and I want to cover something here because I've been finding that a lot of people today are referring to deep breathing and abdominal breathing or belly breathing uh, or diaphragmatic breathing as the same thing. Now, a lot of times deep breathing will engage the diaphragm and things like that, but what I want you to understand is that there is a difference, okay? We can breathe deeply and engage the diaphragm even without the belly moving. We can engage uh, the breath deeply and still take deep breaths in the chest and see the chest rise and fall. See, it's not the same as abdominal breathing. So, when we hear the word deep, sometimes we take it to mean that deep means further down in our body instead of our chest in our abdomen, right? And that's okay if your teacher is actually referring to it in that context. But to think that deep breathing and abdominal breathing are the same thing, this is simply not true. This is just one more instance where the lines uh, are blurring and people are just using terminology any way they want. But we have to be cautious because this can lead to great misconceptions, not only in what we're doing, but how to do it and what we're supposed to be doing. So what I'd like to do is just give a little light on this. Abdominal breathing is is not just an exercise that you engage once in a while to breathe more deeply and have stress relief. The goal of abdominal breathing is to actually shift your natural breathing pattern from up in your chest to down in the abdomen. So you're breathing from the diaphragm all of the time and your abdomen is rising and falling, not your chest. See, this is what's truly meant by that. And it's not just something you do once in a while. 
the the whole idea behind this type of breathing is to make it your natural default breath pattern. This is an important distinction that I think needs to be clarified today. So in the beginning, we may engage specific breathing practices and we may deep breathe to help us relax. I always combine deep breathing uh, with the abdomen breathing, but I also do it with alternate nostril breathing. So there are all kinds of different ways you can deep breathe, see, but the abdominal breathing, the key is to get used to breathing from the abdomen and then to keep practicing that long enough and consistently enough that you engage your nervous system and through that you alter the default breathing pattern in your body from your chest down into the diaphragm and abdomen. This is the idea. And and you're engaging more diaphragms than just the one underneath the rib cage. There are more diaphragms involved when you do abdominal breathing, such as a diaphragm that's uh, engaged in the pelvic floor which is generally not engaged, it's never engaged when you're breathing high up in your chest, and it's generally not even engaged when you just do general deep breathing. So we want to make this distinction just so we have clarity of our practice, because when we have clarity, we know exactly what we're trying to achieve. And when we have that clarity, it's much easier for the subconscious mind to assist us helping in our success. One of the other things that I wanted to cover for you today is the map that we have of the body, mind, and spirit. I covered this in great detail in my book, Expansion Mastery, and I've covered it in great detail in several earlier podcasts. So you have a lot of reference material for this. But we want to understand that the body, mind, and spirit is not just a catchphrase that's used for spirituality or certain movement practices or what have you, that it is actually revealing a map to us. And it's letting us understand that we must engage all three areas of the self in our practices. This, to me, is one of the most important senses of a trinity because we have to be present. And and here's one way to understand this. When we meditate, meditation requires a specific type of posture. Now, there are various postures, but we have to have some things that are consistently present in our posture in order to actually meditate. Oftentimes, it's overlooked that the body plays such an important role in meditation, as well as meditative practices, and it certainly does. There are always specific postures of the body. So it's the posture, that's how we engage the body, but that's not the only way. But our posture must be in in a certain alignment, right? So think about this. If our posture is poor, we're slumping our back or what have you, there's, you know, there's tension and our shoulders are raised, whatever it is, that affects our breathing. And breathing is the other aspect of the body that coincides with the practices of the mind and the spirit, especially something like meditation. So if our body posture hinders our ability to breathe through the abdomen, this can actually prevent us from attaining any sense of meditation. See, when you slump or have some sort of poor posture, various muscles of the body are unable to function properly. And when we end up breathing from our chest, we engage Uh, numerous secondary muscles, especially around the neck, the clavicle areas, shoulders, things like that, those muscles become engaged instead of the diaphragm, once again, preventing us from breathing properly and from attaining proper posture. When we breathe correctly, it helps with the posture, with having a, a better form of posture by reinforcing proper body mechanics. When we do that, it has a tendency to place far less stress on the body, both as we move and as we sit. When we have 
proper abdominal breathing, it supports our seated posture by keeping us centered in our center of gravity instead of allowing all of that movement to come up into the chest where we become a little chest heavy. And then you may feel your, your back or your, your chest or your shoulders tensing and hurting while you are seated in meditation. And this will throw uh, your ability to meditate right out the window. So we need to understand one thing here. The body is very important in regards to our spiritual practices and meditation itself. We need the correct posture. We need the correct breathing because these things are what allow us to actually get into the mind. Those things are going to assist us. Um, there are certain channels in the body that need to be addressed and opened as well. And they can only be opened when you have very specific postural alignments. So here, here's the thing. Here's a wonderful rule of thumb that I like. We need to understand that your breathing affects your posture and your posture affects your breathing. See, these things work hand in hand. So we want to make sure that we have a good posture in all of our practices because poor posture can result in improper forms of breathing and even result in labored breathing, which we know will prevent us from going into uh, any sense of deep meditation or can even prevent us from being successful in the, the simplest of meditative practices. And again, I have a tendency to observe that a lot of people engaged in meditation don't place near enough importance on their body posture or their breathing. They may do one or the other, but especially the posture, it's, it's going away. People are less connected to their body today, less aware of their body, and the importance for that slips away from them. And they believe that it's just all about what's going on in the mind, but this is actually not true. Remember, the mind and the body are intimately linked, and they are dependent upon one another, not only for life, but for our practices as well. And this is one of the reasons that very specific postures have been invented, like the full lotus and the half lotus and variations of those, because they are getting us to the core of the alignments that we need to have throughout our entire body in order to achieve the state of meditation. When your body posture and your breath are aligned and they're both properly performed, that is what allows us to go into meditation very easily. And we can look at this very simply in terms of, you know, if we have poor posture, our breathing is not right, it may be labored, we may have uh, stress and tension in various muscles of the body. Uh, some of that is going to result in discomfort or outright pain. See, all of those things are going to distract you from being able to meditate. In addition, if we look at it uh, this way, we can also see that if our spinal column is not stacked correctly, in other words, it's not properly aligned and opened, uh, if certain channels in the body are not opened, then we have a blockage there that can also prevent us from attaining a meditative state. Ideally, what we need to do is be able to put the body into a position where it can sustain that position, that posture, even when there is no sense of awareness or mind for the body. It sits in that position all by itself. And along with that, there is a sense of perfect balance, perfect alignments, and it is in a state of full relaxation, all of the muscles, all of the tissues are then able to relax and just kind of hang from the skeletal system. This is just one way we are able to see the intricate and incredibly important nature and interaction of the self 
being made up of the body, the mind, and the spirit. So we have to prepare the body. We have to put the body into a particular shape. And that will allow us then to get into the mind. And then once we're into the mind, then we can cross the bridge uh, into the realm of spirit, of essence, of conscious awareness. Through this, you can see then that spirituality is not just about meditating. It's not just about things in the mind. It's learning how to discipline and work with the physical body to do the same with the mind and then utilize that to access our essence and then ultimately bind those three things together to where we have a sense of conscious awareness in this mind and body. It is then that we are able to achieve this sense of body, mind, and spirit integration and unification. I recommend working with various postures. The Japanese postures are very helpful. You can do yoga postures as well. I prefer the Japanese postures, but that's just my preference. That That's not a big deal. I like, uh, and I, I explain this in my book, sitting in the posture called Seiza. Uh, it's a Japanese posture, you know, where you're sitting down on your feet uh, with both feet under uh, your seat. I also sit in Fudoza, where you have one foot uh, under your seat. Uh, and the other foot tucked up against the knee. These postures help prepare you for meditative postures. And indeed, you could even meditate in a posture such as Fudoza. Certain martial arts schools had a tendency to utilize that one. Uh, It's a little difficult because that foot you're sitting on can go to sleep and and be painful very uh, quickly if you're not used to it. But uh, it helps prepare your, your body to open up a little bit and give you some flexibility and a degree of comfort that will then assist you when you go into a a more complex meditative posture like uh, the full lotus or half lotus. And we want to remember one of the things that's important in uh, attaining the proper positioning with these lotus postures is that the, the soles of the feet, the bottom of the feet, should be facing upwards. Hey, the idea is to allow the uh, heavenly energy, right, the heaven chi, yang chi that's coming down uh, on us to enter in through these kidney one points in the bottom of the feet, whereas generally uh, the earth chi is being brought up through those. So that is one of the functions. The other is that it helps to keep the knees down, right? We want to keep the knees down below our hips, a great way to begin practicing this and, and discovering the importance of posture is just to begin noticing how you sit on a regular basis. When you're seated on your sofa, when you're seated at the dinner table, when you're seated in your car, when you're seated in your, your office chair, whatever it is, begin paying attention to your posture and make sure that you are sitting up straight. Make sure that there is no tension in the neck, the shoulders, the back, the chest area. Make sure that you are relaxed. Make sure that you are aligned at all times or at least as much as you can possibly remember to pay attention to it. You want to pay enough attention to it that it eventually just becomes the way that you sit. And uh, I'll tell you, that's one thing that has always impressed me about my wife is she has very good posture. This is just something I've always observed of her is that she naturally had a very nice posture. And this is probably just one of many, many attributes that allow her to engage uh, her martial practices and her meditative practices um, so easily and, and get results so quickly. So make sure that you don't lose this sense of importance for the body in your meditative practices and meditation. It starts there. It starts with the physical, starts with the body, and the body refers to the posture and the breathing. Those two things are critical. Uh, The relaxation is part of our posture, right? So we want to make sure that's in there as well. And remember that the breath is of the utmost importance. There is no authentic spiritual system in existence that does not stress incredible amount of importance 
on the breath and the way we breathe. So make sure that you uh, address the breathing practices. Make sure that you have clarity in your sense of breathing practice so that you know exactly what you're trying to work on. Otherwise, it can result in you feeling a little more relaxed, which is fine. It's very beneficial, right? But it's not taking you into anything deep. And today, people are, are so stressed and so wound that they think that's a spiritual experience in itself, but it isn't. It doesn't even scratch the surface of what is available to you. It just allows a very basic sense of relaxation, which can offer relief, and that's fantastic. But we are looking to take it deeper. Okay, I hope these tips help you in your practices. And whether you're a beginner or advanced, it's always good to reflect on yourself and what you're doing and make sure you haven't allowed anything to slip. So... Make sure to visit www.expansionmastery.com. Get your autographed copy of Expansion Mastery there. I even knocked the price down on that book, five bucks, through my website. So take advantage of that. Get the hard copy, the real book. Paper smells great. Feels good in your hands, right? Uh, Enjoy the actual book, and I will autograph it specifically for you. And you can also get the newly revised and expanded edition of Reinvent. Inventing yourself through realignment. You you don't want to miss that. I added a chapter. I added all kinds of incredible information in that. So make sure you get your copy of that. Make sure you uh, also leave your email address and name there so you get on the Expansion Mastery family list. Uh, I respect your privacy. I'm not going to sell any of your information or anything like that, and I don't bother you. Um, I only send notices when there's a contest, a giveaway, uh, basically whenever you have the opportunity to get something uh, for free. And you want to check back there often and watch for the release. It's going to be a multi-stage program. And I highly encourage everyone starting right at the beginning and working their way through. But this is going to be a very, very powerful program. And it's going to be one of, if not the most comprehensive, powerful breathing programs uh, that, that is available to anyone in the public. And I hope you take advantage of this. It will be for sale only in mp3 format uh, only at www.expansionmastery.com until next time my friends i wish you the very best in your practices and in your life i've had a great time hanging with you again today i truly appreciate you tuning in take care